Once you feel comfortable using the basic selection tools like the rectangular marquee and the ellipse marquee tool and the lasso tools, lasso the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool, we can take our selections kind of one step further. And I would say the next classification of selection tools that you want to use are the grouping that's found under the magic wand tool. And so in my setup for Photoshop, my magic wand tool is right here. And if you push and hold, there's a quick selection tool and there's a magic wand tool. And both can be effective depending on what you're trying to select. I'm going to start with the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool works as a brush, so it is a brush tool, meaning you can make the brush bigger or smaller. And so if you use your right and left bracket keys, you can make the brush bigger or smaller. And the way that the, the quick selection tool works is it allows you to click and it tries to figure out what you want to select. See, I just, I just clicked one time and it's like you must be selecting the building. And so every time you click, you can kind of add to the selection. And so you can click and drag and it will try to figure out what you want. And see how I went really fast over here to the right and it uh, grabbed the top of the building. Let's zoom in on that it figured out I was trying to grab the building and so it's trying to help me and push me kind of in the right direction. And so you can click and drag or you can just click, click, click and kind of slowly grab what you want. Command or Control D will deselect and you could do that in reverse so you could click the sky and see how one click grabbed that entire corner of the sky. Uh, let me zoom in this way. And so you can see, whoops, that it got all the way to the corner and it knew with one click that I was trying to click the sky. And so with the with the quick selection tool, I don't have to hold shift, it knows I'm, I'm selecting. And so now I'm just going to click right here where it overlaps my current selection. And now it grabbed all the way across, all the way down the buildings, all the way over to where it couldn't grab anymore because it's not continuous. And then I can come over here and click the blue area. And I can quickly grab the sky in this entire image um, by let's make the brush smaller so I can get over here by just clicking with the quick selection tool now it doesn't do the best job because if we zoom in up here on the corner you can see that it grabs so much it's like floating around today it grabs so much that I lost the top and so I can make a smaller brush and use the option key which will subtract from a selection and you can try to subtract the part that you didn't actually want to have and it's smart, it's intuitive, it's trying to figure out what you want. And so as you go across the top, I missed these guys too. You can hold the option key and click on them and you can have Photoshop help you along the way. So it missed the top of this one too. And you can kind of add and subtract from your selection. And what we'd recommend is you don't hit undo and and then redo it because as you use the option key and the shift key to add and subtract from a sec uh, selection, Photoshop's learning every time you do it and it will make a better selection for you ultimately. And now if I hit delete here, you can see I still missed some of the tops of the buildings, but I was able to make a selection really fast. And I have another image open here where I can show that one more time. And so maybe I want to select the flower or I want to select everything but the flower. It doesn't matter. Um, you can use the the quick selection tool here on the tools panel. So push and hold, quick selection. And I'm going to use my right bracket key to make the selection bigger and just click. And it will say, oh, I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to select. And it grabbed this random spiral type area. But as you continue to click, see with two clicks, it just got the entire flower. And so now if I wanted to grab everything but the flower, maybe I was going to make it blurry. You could come up here to the selection menu and you could inverse your selection and then we could apply a filter to it. Maybe we want to do a blur filter and we're going to do, let's do a motion blur and let's do a really big motion. And so now when I applied my filter to the active selection, which is everything but the flower, I could make the background blurry. I could even make it, let's do it again. Let's do select and then reselect. And now I still have the background selected because that's the last thing I had selected. If we go to filter, we could do blur gallery and we could do radial blur if we wanted to. And the bigger it is, the more crazy it would end up being. But then you could isolate the flower for your picture if you wanted to. And so that's one of the benefits of the quick selection tool. Let's go back to our other image here and let's do file revert and then I'm going to do command D to deselect. In addition to 
in addition to the quick selection tool, we also have the magic wand tool, which is really good at selecting areas of similar color. And the way the magic wand tool is, is if you click, it will try to grab all the colors nearby that are the same color in the design. There are some settings that are important with the magic wand tool. And so up here on the options bar, when you have the magic wand tool selected, you can choose a sample size, a tolerance, and you can choose um, anti-alias and contiguous settings. The two settings that we are concerned about in Art1280 are tolerance and contiguous. Contiguous means connected. And so when I have contiguous selected and I click an area of the building, it will only grab the part of the building that's connected to it. It will not, I will not make a selection on the left hand side and the selection stops and then you make a selection on the right hand side. But if you uncheck contiguous up here, if you deselect that, and now you click, so I'm going to deselect and click the same area of this building, it will select every color in the picture that is similar to the color that you selected. And so if we delete that area, you can see everywhere in this picture that was the same exact shade of the taupey brown color of that building. But with contiguous selected, so let's do undo. With contiguous selected, if I click this area, as soon as it hits a wall and it hits an area of the picture that's not the same color, it closes the selection and it will not. And so a better example might be the red awnings on this picture on, on these restaurants down here. If I use contiguous and I select the red area, it will only select the red stripe because on the outer bounds of that stripe is a different color. But if I uncheck contiguous and I select red, it will select all of that same shade of red in the entire design. Now notice how it didn't get all of the stripes, it didn't get all of the awning, and it didn't even get all of the stripes that you want. That has to do, let's do step backward, that has to do with the tolerance. So the tolerance is set to 32 by default, that's the default setting, and if you increase the tolerance, it will accept more colors than what you click on. If you set the tolerance to one, and you Let's deselect, click an area. It will only select that exact shade of red. And you can see that the stripes are not a continuous shade. There's like tone ranges to them, maybe lights reflecting off different areas in different ways. But if you go higher than 32, let's say we do 50, when you make a selection, it's going to be more accepting of colors that are, that are kind of like the color that you selected. And so 50 is too much because now it's grabbing um, yellows or gold colors that have red undertones to them. And so if 32 doesn't work, maybe try 35 and click again until you get the area. See, 35 kind of worked. It kind of got all the colors that I wanted and all the stripes plus the awning. And so the magic wand tool is going to work for colors or similar colors. And so I could grab all the yellows in the, the metal work here. And maybe this would be a better selection to make as contiguous and do one at a time. And then I can increase tolerance as high as I need to go in order to get the colors that I need. And you're going to go back and forth until you find that balance. And so a lot of times we'll use um, the magic wand tool if we're doing the sky. Because when you click on the sky, let's make this back to the 32 default. Um, you want to grab all the blue stuff, right? And so you can quickly, if we delete this, see that you're grabbing all the blue stuff. And if you make it, let's do undo, if you make it not contiguous, it will grab all the blue in the whole sky, and you could delete all the blue at once. Now, my tolerance was set to 32, and the blue that you still see in the image wasn't within the range it was selecting. And so you could then say, well, it's not grabbing everything I need. Let's increase it to 35, and let's see if now with 35 does it get everything I need. And you can keep increasing it until it gets to the point where it grabs everything that you want now, sometimes you're never going to get it perfect. So right now, I could increase the tolerance to 100, and I probably still won't get all the sky, or I get all the sky, and then it will start taking color from the, from the rest of the image. And so there are times where you're not going to in keep increasing the tolerance until you get the colors, but you still want to get part of the image. So let's color this black so you can see. I still need to grab all the other colors that, that you can't see there. And so what you can do is instead of increasing the tolerance, just hold shift and you can add to your selection. And so if I click on the blue sky, 
and I'm not getting the clouds, I can hold shift. Let's zoom in over there. And if you hold shift, you can add that part to the selection. So now this looks nice in this corner. I'm going to push the space bar, which changes the tool to the hand, and then I can drag. And see how it's doing a much better job than the quick selection tool. I didn't lose the top of the buildings. I'm just checking all along the edge here. Um, when I use the magic wand tool, because it's based on color, it actually selected in between the little gaps in the railing here. And so this is doing a much better job of selecting that sky. I'm just going around making sure it has everything selected. And if it doesn't, I'm going to hold shift and add to my selection. But that did a really good job. So now if I wanted to change the color, maybe instead of having a sky there, I just want to do edit fill. And I want to fill it with a color. And I'm going to make it a light blue color of my choosing. And so for my project, I wanted to have a, a, a sky this color. And so I could use it to do that. But you can also use it to create a hole in the selection. And you could put a different picture behind it. And so you could uh, change the sky if you don't like the sky. It's crazy how choosing a, a sky that has a green undertone on it really changes the look of that image. OK, so those are the magic wand tool and the quick selection tool. For the skills practice, you're required to use what you learned in this demo video and the lecture and apply it to a different image, but the process is still the same. Remember, contiguous means touching or connected, and tolerance, the higher it is, the more colors your, your selection will accept, and the lower it is, the more kind of snooty and specific it will be. And so if there's just one specific color you want to select, make the, the tolerance one, and you will only get that very exact shade of blue or red or purple or whatever you're clicking on.